Deep House is not a new sound. It's been around since you know the beginning of electronic music in, in some ways. But I think the brand of Deep House that Anjuna Deep represents is the more kind of soulful, emotional, melodic. That's a sound that you can listen to at home. You can listen to it in a club. You can listen to it on the tube. In my personal opinion, it sounds great outdoors because there's something about just listening to that music in the fresh air. But the BPMs are slower. That naturally creates a slightly less hectic kind of arms in the air environment. I like that because it's also more of a sort of sociable atmosphere. There's a, a feeling where the music is hugely important, but it's not the only thing and the only reason why you're there. You're surrounded by like-minded people and there's a kind of vibe in the room. Everyone's open and friendly. There's so much snobbery in, in certain genres of music and Anjuna Deep is about that inclusivity and just inviting everyone in and, and sharing that experience together. I feel like we raised the bar on Anjuna Deep 07 and 08 and now we've got to kind of maintain that and that that's a challenge. There are other external forces at play as well, you know, I've got three children, a very busy day job managing above and beyond and so getting that job done alongside all the other pressures is, is, is not easy. People are really starting to appreciate that sound. I don't know whether it's because of what's going on in the world in general, but people just seem incredibly receptive to what Anjuna Deep is doing right now. I mean, I wouldn't say that, you know, I was out raving every night as a teenager, um, but it, we, I was definitely listening to a, le a lot of electronic music, and so that probably was the soundtrack to me growing up. I studied law at university for four years, including a year abroad in France and Germany. I enjoyed it, I met some good people, but I just knew instinctively that law wasn't meant for me long term. When I was at school, I wanted to continue that, that interest in electronic music, so created this two-hour radio show called The Marshmallow Show, which gave me the chance to just play a load of eclectic electronic music. So, you know, my abiding memory of Jono growing up is that he was always upstairs learning the piano on my grandmother's knee. She was a piano teacher. I was always outside in the garden, kicking a football around and wanting to be a professional footballer. And Jono had a studio in his bedroom. He was probably more into sort of like jazz and blues, but I started gently drip feeding him some electronic music, not with any kind of intention other than, look, this is cool stuff, I'm into this, see what you think. Um, and, and gradually he started making stuff in that, in that direction. And he, I went off and did my thing, and uni and ski season. Jono is five years younger than me. When he went to university, it was to study commercial music. And there he met Parvo, who's one third of Above and Beyond. And so they started making music together. Jono was always very entrepreneurial and, and had started selling sample CDs online. And Tony's brother was making music at this point, And he actually contacted Jono and bought one of these sample CDs and said, hey, you should meet my brother. Tony was then working at Warner Music, but had started heading to the studio and dabbling in dance music. So the three of them worked together and started doing some remixing. So this would have been around the time that I was uh, finishing my ski season. I think they got an on-spec remix uh, for Madonna through Tony's contacts with Madonna's manager. And that remix really blew up and Madonna used it on the video and it really put the Above and Beyond name on the map. And it was around that time I'd started talking to them and. You know, suggesting maybe I could come on board and help them. And I think Anjuna Beats was on about five releases at that point. So my pitch was really, you know, let me come on board and help you with the label and help you grow Above and Beyond. And I think my first job was really to shop the Above and Beyond uh, first single, which was a track called Far From In Love. Um, and we managed to sign that to various labels around the world. And that sort of got my foot in the door. That was probably around 2001. Eventually they 
took me on and we became partners in this incredible uh, enterprise that we've now built together. Even when I started out working with the guys, you know, it was to help grow Anjuna Beats and to manage eventually above and beyond. And the Anjuna Deep thing was really just a kind of sideline hobby type activity where it was, I'm into some other music that we're not currently covering through our output. It would be a shame to overlook that and it would be really enjoyable to be able to kind of indulge in that. And it, there was no great plan with it, it was just an idea, let's, you know, let's, let's broaden our horizons a little bit, let's expand what we're doing. And we ended up creating this other label, Anjuna Deep. You know, it's still a bit of a sort of pinch yourself thing that it's reached this scale and size because there was no master plan. It was purely about, let's release some of this other cool music that we're into. End of plan. <laughs> So with Anjuna Beats we had this compilation series, the volume series, and it, it was really um, a compilation of the best releases on the label that year. And, and so naturally we had the same idea for Anjuna Deep. I think the first one, because it was a new thing, we wanted above and beyond to mix it and, and it was their label with, uh, with myself and it was very much a collaborative exercise where we put together this, this first compilation um, really to showcase what this new label was all about. But then as Above and Beyond became more of a kind of well-known big room act, it didn't feel right to continue having them as the, as the sort of head of that mix series because it was maybe misleading people what they would get when they went to an Above and Beyond live gig. So over time we evolved it and, and had other people come in to mix it, which I think was initially myself, JTech, and then we brought Jody on board um, because whenever I was in the office wanting to listen to a mix, just head to Jody SoundCloud, big fan of all of his mixes, and uh, we just hit him up and asked him if he wanted to be involved, and thankfully he, he was up for it. And I think that, that was another turning point for the label, really, where we really started to achieve the sound that I had in my head for, you know, for, for what Anjuna Deep should sound like. that vision and he and I have kind of really discovered a, a, a level of chemistry that I didn't think either of us thought was possible when it comes to mixing these compilations. The process of making an Anjuna Deep compilation is probably a year-long process. The mantra is always you know it'll be ready when it's good enough which is why it takes so long. And it can be quite intimidating because there's a lot of music to sift through. It involves myself and Jody going through all of the new submissions, all of the new music, also looking outwardly at music that we're into or ideas for remixes, because those things add color beyond what we can offer with our own catalog. We're looking for certain building blocks, so you know, strong vocal tracks or strong intro tracks and once you you find a couple of those building blocks then everything starts to fall into place. I think each, each track obviously has its own emotion and, and its own story to some degree. Where it gets exciting is when you get the chance to put multiple tracks together into a mix and, and create a, a journey that is open to interpretation. You hope that it tells a story but obviously each individual interprets that story in a different way uh, and that's something that I feel we've got better at with the compilation series, I think um, maybe 07 and Junior Deep 07 is where I really felt for the first time like we'd nailed it and, and, and I'd actually created the type of mix that I'd always aspired to. I think if you listen on your headphones then you're naturally just being more introspective and it can trigger trains of thought that may not otherwise have happened. If you're listening to music out and about with friends then it's naturally just a more sociable experience and it's more about the ambiance and, and, and sharing that experience with 
like-minded souls. Um, both are enjoyable experiences in my opinion, um, but I prefer the kind of uh, the shared experience just because the vibe in the room is something that you can't manufacture or create in any other way. You can't help yourself. One thing I always feel is like a shared interest in the same music almost like pre-qualifies someone as a, as a friend. So when, whenever I meet an Anjuna Deep artist for the first time, you know, we may have chatted online, they've sent us a demo. When we're all into that exact same sound and music, it's almost pre-filtered, you know, it, it just makes sense that we're on that same wavelength and that we're, we're, we're going to get along. Um, and I think that's another beautiful thing about what we do is it kind of brings together like-minded people from all over the world and they share this experience together. Yeah, I think we've been lucky to unearth a group of extremely passionate artists and it's become like one big family and it's almost snowballed because once you bring in good people, then they help you find other good people. So a lot of the way we find new artists is by recommendations from existing artists. Right now we're on a bit of a purple patch where we seem to be kind of inundated with great music and we're almost wondering how we're going to get it all out there, um, but that's a nice problem to have. Having Above and Beyond do what they do and be so successful at that has given us a certain freedom to take risks and to stay true to ourselves with what we do on the labels. We've always believed that if you just do the right things, then the success will follow. And we just focus on staying true to what we believe in and trust in our instincts. And that's served us really well so far. It will always be just about music for us. I think one of the things I'm most proud of is that people come up to us at our events, whether it's an Above and Beyond event, and Juna Deep, and Juna Beats, and they always say that the atmosphere is so friendly and inclusive. And I think that does create an environment where people can make new friends and there's a shared connection in the room. That is why people go out. Why do you go out you know, any given night? It's to, it's to have a shared experience, to meet new people, and to feel that shared connection in the room. I had a guy come up to me at a Anjuna Deep London thing that we did a couple of weeks ago and he sort of said, look, I was all alone and in a really dark place in my life. And then I came to an Anjuna night and made loads of friends and it's pretty much changed my life and I'm here tonight with several of them. Obviously, when you hear that kind of story, it makes all the hard work worthwhile, firstly, but it kind of, adds extra importance to what you're doing and, and to know that it's having that kind of effect on people and, and that people are making real friendships through it and sharing these experiences with people, it, it just adds an extra layer of feeling to the whole enterprise. When we first started Anjuna Deep it was almost like a hobby and almost a guilty secret or a guilty hobby. and. It didn't feel like it was an important part of what we did. It was a nice outlet for me and for the guys to, to try something different. But as it's grown over time, I think it's become an important part of what we do and an incredibly important thing to me personally. I lost my sister two years ago and it was at that moment when I realised how important music was to me. And I think it was I was very lucky at that point to have an outlet that I could use to express how I was feeling and I think that's probably why you hear so much emotion in I think it was Anjuna Deep 07 that we were making at that point. It really took on a new importance and helped me through that time and made me realise how important music is to me and how lucky I am to have music as a, as a way of expressing myself. I think everyone needs a way of expressing themselves, whatever outlet that may be. And I'm very lucky to have Anjuna Deep as my outlet. I no longer feel guilty about Anjuna Deep. 
Um, I recognise its value, I recognise its importance to me. I don't know quite how a particular type of music can attract a certain type of person, but somehow our fans are all nice people. Everyone is so friendly, everyone is so down to earth, and we're very grateful for that. <laughs>